Welcome to Smarter Circuits. I'm your host, Ian Klein. This is mostly an update video, but I'm going to talk about two projects I've been trying to finish for a few months now, as well as my first patron, but I'll get to that in a bit. If you've been following my videos about Shelly relays, low voltage lighting, or stepping down control voltages using helper relays, I'll be covering the progress on the larger control conversion in the house a bit later. First and foremost, I'd like to apologize for the massive gap between videos. I have been intermittently available. One reason for the delays is that we've been dealing with our old house, which is now sold. The second reason for all the delays has simply been my regular occupation. The company I work for is not normally super crunchy, but during the early part of the year they get abnormally busy, and so cognitive runtime is dedicated to keeping the lights on. The last reason, but probably the largest contributor to the delays, is a cyclical failure to complete these three projects. The first project is the automated do-it-yourself roller shade I've been fiddling with for about three months. The second, which I've been fiddling with for about five months, is using the old low voltage momentary switches in the house to trigger the circuits controlled by the new relay system. The third project I won't be disclosing because there's still a chance it will be in the next video or two, and I actually don't want to ruin the surprise. Also, it may be delayed, so I also don't want to overpromise and underdeliver. I am a learning creature. The roller shades are a bit of a strange animal because I've already successfully built three of them. Here they are in the game room slash studio. The catch is that I was halfway done building these when I actually started Smarter Circuits, and since I assembly lined the build, I was past the initial steps by the time I thought to take any video. At the time, I knew I'd be installing more of these, eventually over most of the windows in the house, so I figured I'd use another one down the line. I chose the day room roller shade as the one for the video because the roller shade was already installed by the previous owner, and I saw it as a great opportunity to show the ambiguous nature of the idea from a parts perspective. I like to keep the concepts here just detailed enough to spark someone else's imagination without pigeonholing them into my hardware or design. I shot video of the disassembly and conversion of the roller to accept a DC motor, test mounting and hard mounting the motor, controller and power supply, and that's when it all went off the rails. I had a complete setup when parts I had ordered nearly a month earlier for the switching system arrived unexpectedly early late. I had all the hardware and wiring ready, but not the software for the Raspberry Pi, so I did the bad thing and reprioritized the switch system project. I had a problem though. I had all the parts I needed for the switching system except one, the power supply. So I borrowed the power supply from the day room roller shade to use on the switching system. I figured I'd simply do the switching system video, then return the power supply, but unlike the roller shades, the switching system still had another hidden failure waiting for me. You may have seen my previous video explaining how to use a secondary relay to separate long wire runs in order to alleviate input issues with microcomputers. Well, that was sort of wrong. It turns out the relays I chose for the switching system, while extremely reliable, durable, and outright cool looking, have a fatal flaw for use with the Raspberry Pi's GPIO. The coil is so powerful, it reintroduces the electromagnetic interference issue I was attempting to escape, and it does so tenfold what the original long wire runs do. When one of these guys kicks on, it thinks I'm mashing all the switches adjacent to the relay within about 8 inches. The blinking lights do look cool though. I can take these relays and use them directly with the Shelly relay switch inputs at this stage because of the isolation they offer, but I want to be able to address the switches and use them for more than just the Shelly relays, like the roller shades I'll get to shortly. I have a few more ideas to try, but one of them involves using IC chips I can't currently get my hands on and don't have time to build the interface boards for anyway. So this isn't necessarily a failure as much as it is a really big setback. I will likely be doing at least two more videos on this as I try different things. But instead of trying to finish this one and produce a video strictly after I've had success, I think this would be better presented with the struggle at hand. Okay, so back to the roller shades. Well, I probably won't get back to them for quite some time as it has become both cost prohibitive and a bit too irritating to deal with for the foreseeable future. So I'm going to show you a very hastily edited montage of some of the day room roller shade assembly. This was going to be boiled down a bit more and added to other video, but that's not happening now. So I'm just releasing it as is so you can get an idea of what I did to make these shades work. I'll be putting some code on the GitHub repo as well, links in the description. Before I run the montage, I want to thank my very first patron, John Joshua Vanessa Peltier, or Peltier, not sure, 
Every bit of the money generated by the Patreon will be used to purchase devices for review, equipment for lighting or recording, or some other improvement to the channel. I will be making more content available to patrons soon, I'm just trying to figure all that stuff out. I'm pretty good at cobbling together technology, but the business and social interaction side of things is admittedly not my strongest suit. If you've made it this far, thanks, and maybe you should consider subscribing if you can listen to me babble this long. And now, without any further babbling, the Roller Shade Assembly Montage. I do hope you enjoyed the video, and of course if you did enjoy it and haven't already done so, please do subscribe to the channel. 
If you want to know what's going on between episodes, you can follow Smarter Circuits on Twitter, at Circuit Smarter. And if you'd like to help make more and better videos possible, consider becoming a patron on our Patreon linked below. Thanks for listening to me ramble, and I do hope you'll join me for future videos as I continue exploring Smarter Circuits.